Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat especial. The skill saw mag 77. The saw what built America. United States of Freedom. Fuck yeah! Skill saw, a wholly owned subsidiary subs of Chevron Hong Kong Limited, with a factory in the one of the historic, well, actually a beautiful spot in China, one of the historic capitals of a thousand year old empire, Nanjing, China. Now, I ain't ashamed to say I am all a Twitter to get into the meat of her. This saw has been around since 19, well, 1924, essentially, uh, toted as the saw that built America. And I mean, a skookum chucher, as far as saws go, this was always my go-to wedding present for for buddies because they'd have this their entire life so it'll be super interesting to see what changes have been made to this in order to have it manufactured in china maybe it's better than ever one never knows Ooh. cut towards your chum not your thumb there we go what in the box good sign not too much extraneous crap what for loading up your landfill skill saw pre-punched with the diamond so don't be using this the real deal saw blade in one of them chintzy non-skill saws won't be able to do it yeah we got uh won't be needing this but whoa oh, holy fuck good thing i opened that up i never uh something for looking in a mirror that looks like some sort of deck no fuck me i love me some good stickers Oh, yeah, that ought to last at least until the commemorative shop coffee mug centennial washing. Well, fuck, what the hell are we waiting for? Let's get into the meat of her. Here's the cord. This is not a double insulated tool, of course, with a metal body. So we need that grounding lug. Uh, it's only 60 C rated 300 volts. So service junior. Oh, and it's only service junior. So it's not water resistant, it's not oil resistant, it's, uh, yeah, kind of shitty cord. Nice big conductors, but nothing special on the cord. It's pretty janky here. It's not fit. The, the strain relief isn't actually, strain relieving doesn't seem to be. This looks really weird, suspect. It just fucking spins. Touching, yeah, the handle does not feel nice. Not at all. That's uh, not a typical tool plastic. Oh, here's a marking here. Whoa. I don't know if you can see that. There's a big wow in there. Real thin plastic. So this is nylon, but no glass fiber reinforcing. Just straight nylon. Of course, they do that. The glass fiber makes it stiffer and more... Uh, more resistant to abrasion and so forth but it's also it wears out the mold so it ends up being more expensive here's the over molding and it's uh, styrene with uh, butylene molecules on the end you see wafer just a razor thin trigger guard here on the bottom that's no fucking good uh, not real impressed so far with the plastique. There's the mag base here. We'll just double check, make sure they're not trying to scam us. This is the, the only difference between the worm drive with just the aluminum body and the mag base, really, is that all the castings are magnesium. Doesn't make a difference. Eh. But the aluminum body has a pressed uh, punch steel, just flat steel foot here, sole. And this one has a nice, thick, rigid magnesium sole. We can see all the cross bracing in here. So it's actually very nicely uh, die cast and then painted or powder coated. I'll show you how to tell if it's actual magnesium or not. Just some vinegar. Uh, she's bubbling away there. We know that that is magnesium. Aluminum doesn't do that. Now the test, of course, is lighting it on fire. The only problem is that's a destructive test. Once you get this on fire, this big section, it ain't ever going out. Well, this is all die cast and quite nicely, I might add. Some nice details here. Stay true, registered trademark of Chevron Hong Kong Corporation. So molten aluminum, or magnesium rather, 
aluminum 9% and zinc 1%. Of course, uh, the I bet you it has to be done in an inert atmosphere, which adds to the cost. But that that is a proprietary blend, or it used to be a proprietary blend of, uh, oh, here's a Swiss company that does mining, and I don't recall. But that is a very rigid, nicely structured, it's like, when you mix and match all these alloys, they, they pick them so that the grain structure is real fine and the thing is real rigid. So that is a really good material, but it's not pure magnesium. It does have some aluminum and some zinc in there. 9% aluminum, 1% zinc. We can see all the parts in here are all that same material. In the aluminum saw with the steel basal platen, that's straight aluminium, probably with some uh, silicon for nucleation, but whoopsie. We'll have a look at the depth of cut. Nice beefy dingle arm here. Looks to be just shy a quarter inch, probably five. Well, oops, my mistake. Yeah, made in China, five millimeters, but nice and beefy. And it locks in real good. Nice big nut on there. Now this on the other end for the hangulation, um, there's a set screw here, so that's good. So you always get your zero. And this, there's a there's a detent stop there at 45. Well, at 45, at 45 it starts to mush over. You see that? Look at this. And then if you want it a little bit further, you gotta push it down. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Look at that, Jesus. So that's kind of hokey there, but the look at the beef on that. That's pretty nice there. Why would that? You just get rid of that fucking spring. It's just gonna get in your way anyway. Okay, well that's nice. I guessed wrong. I thought for sure these would be metric fasteners, and they are all inch standard. And by all, I mean the one that I've tied. Oh, the walk of shame. By all, I mean the one I've touched. That is a pin bolt. Wow, a threaded pin. Much nicer than the Makita. That was just a bolt on there. It goes right through the bore. I'm surprised it's not sloppier on account of they have electroplated this, so how they get the dimension on an electroplated part. But that's not too loosey goosey. Not bad at all. Oh, here's the Arbor, the outer one. That square drive, and then the oh holy oh fuck! Look at the size of that bushing. That's the 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 saw blade drive arbor, and that actually is part of a bearing assembly. That would be sintered steel, hard as a coffin nail. Wow, wow! So they would sinter that oversized, it'd be in powdered metal, and then uh, it'd be a green, and then they would. Uh, basically center it together so they'd heat it up they'd cook off the binder and then heat it up to get the grains to grow together so centered metal part there we're going to take the blade guard off and it is retained by a jesus clip but it's not it's one of those rolled up ones so this is this is where having a friend would really come in handy i don't have any friends however so i just rely on guile and uh Sticking my tongue in the right spot. That didn't come out right. Ah. Oh, you fucker. Okay, we got a root. And I managed to not stab this right through the meat of my hand. Beginner's luck. Oh, we'll get the blade guard off here. It's just a hardened washer. That uh, I would have to turn on there. So that makes sure that we don't wear through the magnesium. That would be steel. Reasonably hard steel. And then this is, uh, oh, plastic. So this just rides on a plastic bushing, even though we got, oh, I don't like that. Just an old plastic bushing there. Heh, <laughs> this is steel, actually. A little copper coating here from the process that they used to mold this and this isn't a bearing at all you can see hot dog down a hallway fit so that could pack up with uh, you know organics and disgusting schmoo from dead tree carcasses 
but you're not worried at all about this wearing out because we have hardened steel here I betcha yeah skates right across hardened steel hardened steel so that's it yeah that's a good part right there lots of meat there and we have a nice big looks to be a ball bearing on the back side here 20 uh, 6203 RS RS just means sealed it's a L F K bearing so Chinese bearing but look at this nice big bearing and the shaft of it the shaft of it is nice and big as well so this plate covers the back side of the gearbox which is a worm drive unless they're lying to us and this plate here this appears to be aluminum not magnesium got a hole in it and then a gasket actually a diaphragm and what that allows us to do is we have oil in here but then as it gets hot it pressurizes so we want to keep the, we want to keep the ingress of, of moisture and dirt to a minimum so we have to seal it off but because there's those pressure differentials the way we need to do that is with a, a type of bellows so this works as a, an accumulator of sorts and we'll just see if this is yeah that's aluminum there that's an aluminum cover and it's just <laughs> razor sharp haven't uh yeah they could have rotary tumbled this at least just broke some of the edges we can see this was die or uh, punched out of a sheared you can see the shear mark here punched out of a solid chunk flat plate and then formed here all the holes are punched not drilled and we can see some ugliness in the gearbox itself uh, zero fucks given for cleaning up so all kinds of casting schmoo in there some machining schmoo still at first blush it looked like this hadn't been cleaned very well because there was all sorts of little machining debris have a look at the uh, schmoo all over the place it's actually because the fasteners are tri-lobed these are great uh, they make their own threads and so that's why there's all kinds of chips but they also don't back out they're kind of they're like a, a not a, not a nordlock but a uh, a stover nut you know the threads have been moved around a little bit displaced so it it makes for a fastener that stays in the hole we'll release the schmoo ugh, in a controlled fashion as opposed to our normal way of just letting her buck actually i don't have any of this proprietary 11 herbs and spices what's supposed to go in here so what they'll do is uh, let it bleed out here and then I get back to her. Woohoo! Beer clock. Well, that's. Uh, I, she bled out pretty quick. Doesn't seem to be much in there. Uh, this is interesting, quotation marks. Lots of mitigation for not backing off under vibration, but with the with the blue Loctite on there or whatever you know that thermal set plastic that they apply look at this washer you notice anything funny about it so it will bite into the magnesium but <laughs> the the fastener head doesn't engage <laughs> where it's supposed to bite I yeah uh, yeah fail well, one thing I missed that I just noticed for such a beefy tool this handle feel it might be strong enough there's no glass fiber reinforcing it doesn't feel good it needs to be bigger it just doesn't feel skookum you know this is a hell of a tool right this the original widow maker and uh, you kind of want the where the rubber meets the road where the the 200 pound gorilla engages the tool you want it to feel like it can handle it and it yeah it just doesn't feel right so there is plenty of brush material nothing special about it though it's quite soft and there's two schools of thought one the softer the brush the less it wears your commentator bars on on the armature on the motor rotor and the obverse of that is that because it's so soft the abrasive particles get embedded in it and wear your commutator even more almost like a, a diamond you know a, a diamond dust drill bit right it's impregnated in a soft material so 
there is no question though that these brushes will wear quite fast because they're very very soft and you can see not only the scratches but also the pores in the material almost looks metallic but there are no copper particles no metallic copper particles impregnating this brush material let's have a look at the other side that's just saw cut there Here's the comb bars and smell. You can see how soft these brushes are by the amount of wiping off already just in the testing period. Lots and lots of carbon on those brushes. That's good lubrication of course but it just goes to show that these are very very soft brushes. <laughs> We're in like sin a key do switch. Nice heavy detent. Weird mechanism though. Look at just a tiny little pin either side. That you know, this is where the 200 pound gorilla meets 120 volts worth of angry pixies. This is always what fails the switch. You know, the loose wing nut on the steering wheel is what always fucks up. But 120 volts DC rated. Of course, this is a universal motor. It will self commutate, it'll run on DC, direct current. If you had 120 volts of batteries, it would run on 120 volts of batteries but the switches generally aren't rated for dc because it's much harder on the switches when you have ac alternating current the current goes passes through zero there you know it's sinusoidal so there's a point where it passes through zero 60 times a second so when you let off the switch and it breaks contact it's going to go through zero instead of having a big arc. You're, it's going to naturally have zero current. But DC, DC, the switch needs to do all the work. The contacts need to break that big arc. So that means that this needs to be a very robust, at least contact wise, switch. And we have, uh, it is rated here, Canada and USA. And 22 amps rated even at DC. And then at, uh, 205 not that you'd ever put uh, or 220 not that you'd ever put that it's rated at 12.5 amps now the mechanical connection is excellent it's not just a spring-loaded terminal it's yeah look at that nice big wires even added a bit of a shrink wrap there heat shrink and nice big fasteners clamping down that for you know, there's probably a thousand pounds of clamping on that. Very nicely done. Here on the obverse of the clamshell, we have some interesting features due to the manufacturing process. So we've had someone go into the mold itself, uh, H13 or probably possibly D2. I guess it's cheaper material. So H13 would be the, the best steel to do this with. But they are not using glass fiber reinforcing so very likely they're using d2 mold steel because it's cheaper and we can see they've added just some features here very ugly features that must be yeah we can so that an undercut right in the mold that must be so that this gets held in the proper side of the mold so it doesn't fall out or it doesn't stick in the wrong side of the mold and then they got to beat the fuck out of it because of this uh, soft subs material so this would ensure these little lips here would ensure that it would stay in the correct side of the mold and then the the ejector pins yeah yeah we even see here ejector pin marks then the ejector pins can go ahead and push it out because this has to this has to rotate around to another station to get this over molding process done it's it's a two-shot deal here so if if this gets stuck in the wrong side of the mold, the whole operation grinds to a halt. Now this is disappointingly flexible, just all over the place, not rigid at all, like you'd want a nice, stiff, rigid tool in your hand. And if you would focus, you fuck, there we go. So clearly some field revisions done to the mold design. Pretty pug fugly. Actually, this part wouldn't be undercut. They would have had to build that up with a TIG welder or something. <laughs> okay, there's the gearbox assembly. What's holy fuck? Look at the size of her. She's got some gravity to her. 
some special stuff going on some kind of head shaky stuff going on 608 bearing here sealed and so well, that's the skateboard bearing but it's got a nitrile rubber a buna n o-ring in there uh, what for no idea maybe well maybe a, a bit of shock absorption it would, I can't I don't see why what yeah I have no idea why frankly no idea so the terminations on the com bars down here there's no epoxy normally uh, on high-end tools nowadays we see epoxy down here because they always break right here but of course the, the wire itself is reasonably flexible even if it's if it's epoxyed on well not epoxy but even if it's been dipped it's still flexible flexes a little bit and of course copper work hardens so right at the joint where it can't flex and where it can flex that's where it breaks here we have the balancing slots nice big metal fan you never see a metal fan anymore and that's been positively affixed with some stake on so there now a nicely ground splined shaft and nicely ground for this bearing surface which mounts right in here somewhere and then a nut we can see this is interesting after the fact if you would focus you fuck there we go after the fact it <laughs> it's been induction tempered we can see the different bluing and the, the you can see here the oxidation of the steel so this was hardened and then machined and then no and then tempered and then machined we can see it goes from purple to blue to straw yellow so that is definitely that's hard and we'll just confirm that yeah hard as a coffin nail interesting i'm surprised there's no epoxy down here and this bearing that's an oddball for sure I, why it, it it goes in a blind hole it, it, it's got to be for vibration damping, but this thing's so Jesus big. I mean beefy and this engages the worm of The worm and wheel gearbox here. So next we'll have a look at that. Well, actually no first We'll have a look at the field windings big conductors monsters, but look at this Shitty plastic zap straps look at this what what are you serious nice onto the brass down here you can see nice solid stake on no chintziness there uh, silicon steel laminated small thin section lamination so that's all nice like this is robust not, not, not nice and beefy now this though what the fuck we grab a hold of the Yafit little handhold, and here we have what appears to be some shitty ABS plastic, <laughs> tool grade ABS plastic. That's no fucking good. Whatever it is, it's kind of, that doesn't feel right. Um, apparently just the air speed hole guides or something. Now, in here, what, <laughs> what, what is the what? this bearing you see that bearing retention here yeah yeah no 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 so will those three fasteners retain the bearing yes it's is it ugly as sin okay so here's the worm and wheel assembly real sharp down here at the very start of the thread you can see essentially this is a bolt and a nut that you cut and reverse around so the threads are on the outside of the nut this thing spinning things real fast and drives this nut thusly so this is a single throated we see like that uh, if it was double throated this would also have an hourglass to it as I said razor sharp right in here but that doesn't really affect anything because that doesn't because it's it it's not engaging that far over uh, it'll never come into contact with the nice soft bronze gear. This is a nice nicely machined bronze gear No, no chowder marks nothing like that nicely done. We can see 
there is no keyway there's no key so how is this retained it appears to be this is nutted and it appears to just be transmitting the torque by this being bolted down super super tight so it's just relying on the friction created by that clamping force of the bolt which we see in grinders and so forth but nothing on such a large gear so I'm gonna go ahead and try and knock this this appears to be centered metal this uh, nut we'll try and knock this back and see if we can spin this free oh that's on there good so we'll defer to the power of Cunningham's law I'm gonna say that that is exactly what's going on this is torqued on there so tight that this will not move we would have to heat this up. We'd pull a bearing, we'd heat this up, and then bang the hell out of it. Um, I want to pass this on to somebody else, so I don't want to fuck it totally. So the good, curly, and stinky of it, starting with the good. The magnesium die castings are excellent. They're all excellent. The machining of them, excellent. The design, okay, what else is good? <laughs> Getting hung up on the bad here. The good. This brass gear, nicely machined. The worm, nicely machined. A little sharp, it doesn't matter on the lead-in. Um, the motor armature, huge metal fan. It's not going to break off like plastic. You know, you stick a stick in there, something, a little pebble falls in there. You're not going to shear off all your cooling. What else is good? pretty beefy switch sort of a no name but it's rated for dc that means that the contacts gotta be super skookum and the output again nice big beefy stuff here here's the arbor you know that's a big part big strong part the magnesium castings beautiful beautiful no fault at all with the magnesium castings all the machining on them is great nice big beefy brush holders Nice big beefy brushes, even if they're soft and they wear out fast, that's okay. It's no big deal to, to change them out, but nice and big. Again, the casting's perfect. Huge wire in the field. Very nice stiff foot. And big bearings. Speaking of stiffness, big bearings throughout. You, yeah, oversized bearings, but that's what you want. You want a little bit of uh, under-engineered and overbuilt. Now that hot blonde chick you see walking from behind who turns out to be a man. Good from far, but far from good. The ugly is no epoxy on these. So these will rattle and break eventually. Total apprentice amateur hour on the injection molding. This is the type of material you would see on a higher end hazard fraught. No glass fiber reinforcing. And why couldn't they design the mold to hold the part properly without all these apprentice marks and field revisions like you know give your head a shake <laughs> the field windings the wires are rattling around so not epoxy dipped but that that's its own problem because then you need more heating uh they die prematurely a lot of times because that's a, a very good insulator epoxy is and come on man zap straps just flapping in the breeze no fucking good at all and then this speed wing air baffle gotta be some sort of abs recycled sewer pipe refurbished condoms and yeah tears of orphans something nasty that's not the grade of material that we normally see in a in a high-end tool and then all the bearings of course they're big they're oversized but they're all no name off brand bearings you don't know what you're getting this with the retention with the three bolts it's like looking under some skirts and expecting something nice and then getting a big old whiff of jungle bush you know it's kind of shocking that it would be that that chintzy like retaining with three bolts just a, an odd way to do it ugly ugly frankly and what else that's it, it it's like they're just they're just 10 percent off you know there's just a few little design things that are like, why, why would you do that? How much more does it cost you to put in a circlip? 
you know, a retaining ring. How, why is this proud? Why doesn't it fit in the housing? It'll come as no surprise that I gleefully enjoy tearing into stuff and exposing the nasty bits. Unfortunately, in this case, you know, I did have a sense of, well, obviously some false nostalgia about this skill brand. Unfortunately, well, this was my go-to wedding gift, you know, always pissed brides off. And the guy got to, he got to keep it if ever they separated, which, you know, happens 50% of the time. So you've got to consider that. Which one are you going to get in the divorce? And it was always a nice gift to give a friend who would have it the rest of his life. I'm not going to buy this. It's not my go-to gift anymore. If in you recall, I took apart the Makita hypoid saw. It was the plastic body, but I was very impressed with that one. I, re I remember. I don't remember quite specific. I do recall I was very impressed with it. Not real impressed with this one seems to me like it's a dead man walking it's a, a zombie brand here that's just been milked for for all it's worth we well, can see it's not a bad saw but is it a skookum chucher no fucking way in the next video well not the next you know it's got to sit on the healing bench for a while and lose some parts and so forth this is going to get back together hopefully we're going to test it electrically. We're going to do maybe tune it up a little bit. We'll see. Well, we'll leave that for later. But if and you want this, if you would like to receive this and you can give it a good home, I'd love to send it to you. Put your name down in the doobly-doo. Normal rules apply. Thanks for watching. Keep your deck in a vice.